welcome to Sophie and Co. I'm Sophie Shevardnadze. The football fever is coming to Russia, and the kickoff to the tournament is just a few days away. This Russia World Cup will see new technologies, debutante teams, and new management. How will it all work out, and what does it mean for global football? Well, who better to ask than longtime FIFA president Sepp Blatter? Football, the greatest global spectacle, is getting on with the times. Video assistant referee system is being rolled out this World Cup, and the next tournament will see ever more teams compete for the ultimate sports prize. Will these plans benefit football or overcomplicate it? Will the World Cup become bloated and diluted, or more exciting and diverse? And what else is in store for the great game? It's really great to have you on our program one more time. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So um, we've got a lot to talk about. World Cup coming up to Russia and you, your persona and your role in FIFA and just football in general. I know that you have said you created the modern football. And while you were doing this, you made mistakes. What were those mistakes? Well, um, I would uh, say it a little bit uh, uh, different. Um, I made errors. I made errors. And the errors that I made, the biggest one was in uh, uh, by conducting the FIFA and being the boss of FIFA. There is a matter how to manage such an organization. And as I started in this organization, in uh, 75, 1975, when we, uh, FIFA was just a very small organization with 11 people. I was a number 12. I went through all the FIFA, first as a development officer, technical director, um, uh, uh, secretary general, CEO, and then uh, the president. So I grew up with this FIFA. My biggest error was then, um, when I was elected in 98, difficult election, 2002 again with a problem. Then I got to position and I trusted people. And I trusted people so much that at the end, uh, I was finally, I was um, betrayed. Uh, I could, this I have to accept to be betrayed. Uh, by, by uh, people from the executive because they, they, I couldn't cho choose them um, because they, 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 they were not always on my... Uh, but what was for me, and this has harmed me, but this was a, this, when you say mistake, error, to trust all these people and to not realize that. That's and, a mistake that a lot of people make in politics, in business, yeah, and industry. And, and I really just uh, want to talk a little more about the impact that you've had on the game itself, on football itself, not the organization FIFA, but what we see in everyday football. Because I know you've said I've created modern football. Is it maybe taken a little too far? I mean, you came up with these amazing new rules, but the innovations, shouldn't the like, players and other managers also take credit for that? Well... Uh, the, the, uh, the, the part of, uh, of football, and I'm happy you came back on the field of play with your question, um, uh, because I'm more comfortable on the field of play. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, definite. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, I was a good player. I was not a, an, a, an, a star player, but I was a good player. What I have seen in football when I started. Uh, in, in to think about development of football, then I have realized that football is more than kicking, kicking a ball. Football is more than that. But to be more, you have to organize the game. And the game was not organized. The game was only for Europe, Europe and was for uh, South America. And then to go worldwide, and then we had to have a look on the laws of the game. How are the laws of the game? And then the laws, they have to, to, to be adapted, adapted uh, uh, to the development of the game. The game became faster. And then we have realized after the World Cup in Italy in, 
Italia 90. Italia yeah. 90. It was a very boring World Cup, I remember. It, it, it was yes. only defendants playing. Yeah, defending and the back pass to the goalkeeper. At the, at the line, you had referees at the line. They wouldn't participate with the referee in the, in the center. I was the secretary general, and then uh, we have uh, uh, installed the so-called FIFA 2000, uh, a group of specialists to change the laws. How did of that work? Yeah, I remember you put a group together to make a football more combative and more, you know, exciting. How did that group work exactly? What did they do? It, it, it worked because everybody has realized the coaches, the players, the media, even the referees have realized that they were wrong to have referees at the line because to be a linesman or to be a referee is different. The linesman is a judge. The referee is a referee he has to say yes or no. The other one has in or out. So, uh, and then to, to see that the match was lasting less than 30 minutes, the, the whole match in the game when it was played, because this uh, back pass to the goalkeepers and then uh, the, the, the non-respect of, uh, of uh, uh, let's say, the... the uh, the, the, the strikers going and being then tackled from behind by saying, oh, it's nothing or it's just a yellow card. So we had to change that. And uh, this was a, 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 big, uh, a, a, big, uh, a big issue or a discussion. And uh, uh, we had players also with us at that time. I already took uh, Michel Platini in, the, in, in this, uh, this matter. And, and, and really... Uh, so fast, and never the international board has changed the rule. Then from one World Cup to the other, uh, we have made uh, d different changes. Uh, the, uh, the, the game was then four years later in the United States was then faster. Already at the, at the first matches, uh, the people uh, or players have been uh, uh, red carded uh, because of it was called uh, the, the foul, foul play of last instance before... Outside of the 16, uh, of the of the 18 yards uh, line, um, uh, and also we had now linesmen on the on on, on the line, and and thanks to the, to the British, we have to say, uh, we have changed the scoring. It means the, the evaluation of the score three points for a win to say let's go to win, and not only uh, two points in and so on. So this was was the, the biggest change that have been made in, in the laws of the game. Talk to me about the players of today. I mean, you also have called them modern-day slaves, but these people are making millions of euros and dollars per week. I mean, the transfer fees, they're just nuts. They're getting bigger and bigger. Records are broken every year. I don't see how football players are at a disadvantage here and how they're modern-day slaves. Maybe you know something I don't. And I know that you didn't like this whole transfer fee uh, uh, mania where like hundreds of millions of uh, euros or dollars were poured in one player and you wanted to change that, but that didn't happen. So this transfer system, the way we see it right now, is this the only way for football? Or do you think it's still going to be changed in the future? No, it, it, it cannot be changed because it is based on, uh, on uh, the... Um, the so-called uh, offer and demand of uh, economic uh, uh, principles, and that you cannot change. The only thing what FIFA, the, not FIFA, the UFA tried to do is to introduce uh, this uh, system called uh, financial fair play, say, financial fair play. In finances, there are no fair play. Finances, there are accounts. But, and, and then uh, to make a rule that... Uh, an, and a club should not have in between it, it, the income and the expenses. Uh, there should not be a too much uh, a great gap. And where is the money coming from? But this is the same uh, rule uh, where they cannot be successful. So I know that you're not a big fan of the video assistant referee. And it's going to be the first time during World Cup 2018 in Russia that it's going to be used at this level of competition. I've spoken to the organizers, and they're actually saying that it's tested, uh, it's working really well, and it's going to make judgment in football a lot easier. What are your reservations? What's the reason you mistrust it? I don't mistrust 
and that uh, we shall uh, we shall uh, develop also refereeing and uh, we have started uh, to have uh, uh, the goal line technology but it took three years until it was introduced because before you introduce uh, a very important change in the laws of the game uh, there must be some experiences made around the world this is a principle of this international football association board but now and i was i was out then of fifa and they have now uh, put in the so-called um, um, uh, var uh, video assistant referee and this is not exactly what personally we have asked uh, the television to do we have not asked television to be, the, to, to be uh, the referee of the game and so I said, it is not time for a World Cup to make such an experiment. Uh, before going to make an experiment in the World Cup, it shall be done in the different other competitions and worldwide competition. That can be the youth competition, the women's competition, in order to see how it's happened. Because now you have the majority of the referees, they are now in the World Cup, they have never worked with this system. And you have also the majority of the players there. They have never worked with uh, this system. So how? Uh, so that's why I put a question mark behind that. And I was, uh, uh, I was not criticizing FIFA in this, uh, that they said we do it. I was criticizing the international board, uh, the guardians of the laws of the game. Why you have permitted to do that? But now it's done. And then let's see what will happen. We're going to take a short break right now. When we're back, we'll continue talking to Sepp Blatter. We'll talk about football and how it is perceived in today's world and the upcoming World Cup. Stay with us. で、綺麗ない絵の中で何とか自分の空間を保ってくれてる。一番最初は高校に行きたくないと言ったことからですかね。日本特有の文化、あの、社会病理、あの、現象だと思うんですけど、あの、青年期の心の病理現象の一つだ
brought a new team. He changed everyone completely. Um, most of the people in power are now former football players. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know what FIFA needs, whether football players or ex-coaches or good managers. Maybe you can tell me. But also, FIFA wants to create an extended version of FIFA Club World Cup that would be held every four years and 24 club teams would take part. I don't really understand the logic behind it. I mean, FIFA explains that this is actually a great idea. It will bring more competition to the game. will make it more interesting for the fans. A couple of points that I want to ask you about. First of all, the football players. I mean, wouldn't they be so tired of playing these endless tournaments? Because there are just so many of them, you know, FIFA World Cup, the regional champions, Champions League, Confederation Cup, Olympic Games. Um, don't they need to also train and rest? Second of all, the fans. I mean, it's great to have a lot of competitions, but wouldn't that also dilute their attention from the main thing, which is the World Cup? Yeah. And also, why would anyone want to give up, you know, their money? I'm talking about the UEFA clubs. Uh, why would they want to be part of the FIFA World Club? Why? The FIFA World Club is still number one in the world uh, of any uh, sporting event. And it is uh, in popularity uh, five times more popular than Olympic Games. That's Definitely. undoubtable. That's what okay, I said. That's, but that, I'm talking uh, about the FIFA Club World well, Cup. Uh, yes, that they want to but I come to that because at yeah. the end of the question was, okay. will uh, the World Cup suffer? The World Cup will not suffer. No matter what. Not matter what. But the international calendar, it was so difficult to bring an international calendar together. And now with new competitions in this international calendar, uh, that's a nonsense because then uh, uh, we are in the Gregorian calendar with 365 days. So we should ask uh, to uh, have somebody, another calendar uh, with 500 days, and then it would be possible. And it is uh, absolutely, absolutely uh, on the so uh, yes, social, social uh, point of view, uh, it will always be the same clubs, the same players. The players, they cannot... It's impossible. They have no more time to rest. And uh, if they have no more time to rest, then they are injured and they are out. And, and, uh, and, and this is a non-respect, a non-respect to the actors on the field of play. That's first of all. Uh, secondly, uh, the fans, sorry, the fans, at, at a certain time, they will have enough. They will have enough because they open a television there is always football, soccer, all around the world. And, and, and there are so many competitions. And which competition will then suffer the most if all this will be done? The National League. And the, the football is, first of all, uh, the, for a national, the, 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 because it's a national football, national league. And if they try, even now in Europe, they try... Uh, to put the, the, uh, the, the good matches of the Champions League at the end of the week. And, and the end of the week has always been uh, for the national uh, football, not only the professional football, amateur football and all those, they play at the end of the week. And uh, uh, it's a non-respect, uh, this idea is a non-respect to the players, it's a non-respect to the fans, and fans, it's a non-respect to the organization of football. Football is organized through national association. FIFA is, is an assembly or a confederation uh, of national associations. So I get the two points, thank you. And the third point is about the clubs that operate inside their own federations, uh, like Champions League is part of UEFA. Why would they ever want to give up their revenues to FIFA and be part of this new FIFA Club World Cup, for instance? Well, uh, so far, um, so far, and until the end of 2015, uh, finances in FIFA, they were, they, they were well. Uh, I was very happy uh, and proud to let FIFA with uh, uh, 2.4 billion, uh, 1.4 in reserves and uh, 1, 1 billion in cash. Uh, but now FIFA needs more money. They need more money. 
because they have uh, changed uh, the management of FIFA. They have another approach, new, uh, new president. He has another view how to organize FIFA. Uh, with, uh, they, as you have said, with former footballers, that's okay. But the former footballers, they need also the schooling to be in the position they are. Uh, they are now, and how they, they get it with all the people they're in. So um, it is because FIFA is looking for more money uh, that they are coming with these new ideas. And there is somewhere uh, this offer from, uh, uh, from a consortium of uh, banks and uh, uh, don't, it is speaking about J Japan, Saudi Arabia, USA. Uh, they uh, have put together $25 billion dollars uh, to, to get these two competitions. Middle East and Asian countries. Yeah, they've put 25, middle, they want to yeah. invest 25 billion, billion to, yeah, yeah. to actually uh, reform to, FIFA. Yeah, to so buy, to, to buy yeah. out to two competitions. But uh, you cannot buy competitions. So that will be like a first time that you're selling competitions to a third party. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? No. We have never, in, in my, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in my uh, uh, 40, uh, one year in FIFA, we have never sold any competition to a third party. So if what, this happens, what, what we are, uh, pardon? So if this happens, they're going to own FIFA, and they will be able to say where they want the competitions to be held, right? Yeah, sure, you cannot. The, the, the football belongs not to FIFA, belongs not to UEFA. The football belongs to the two million, two billion, two billion uh, fans around the world. This is uh, where the football belongs. And you cannot sell out part of football uh, to, 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 another ent to another entity. This is also from the philosophic point of view, how, how you organize uh, football and the importance, the social, uh, cultural importance of this game, uh, putting people together, uh, but not abusing this game. It is abusing this game and abusing... Uh, I would say players, coaches, everybody, and the fans. Uh, talk to me about this possible investment of $25 billion into FIFA reform. I, I find it fascinating. If you were right now active president of FIFA, you wouldn't take in those $25 billion to reform FIFA. No, I would not sell out FIFA for such an investment. Uh, if they want to give the FIFA uh, $25 million, but telling this for development of football, do it what the best you can do, then I will take it. 25 billion always comes with strings attached. Yeah, yeah but, it but, doesn't but, come but as nobody is giving 25 million for nothing. And, uh, and then now it's up to the FIFA to decide on that. Uh, but uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not convinced because it, it's, a new, uh, it's a new era in FIFA. Uh, but I think this is absolutely wrong. This is absolutely wrong. So I just want to ask you a question about the World Cup that's going to take place in Russia. I know that six countries have boycotted the World Cup, but they're not sending politicians and representatives, but they're still sending their teams. Um, it's not like it's going to have any bearing on the competition itself. So what is the point of this kind of a boycott? Is it going to affect the World Cup in Russia in any way? No, I, I cannot, um, uh, and I am not so sure... Uh, if at the end they are not coming, all this. I'm not so sure. Uh, we will see if by any, any chance uh, the, uh, the uh, FA team, England, will do well and is going to a quarterfinal or a final, uh, then the people in, uh, in London, they, they, they will be, the, uh, be on their chairs and say, we, we, we have to go. And to, to announce a an, an, uh, an, uh, boycott and a competition uh, because uh, of the uh, of the uh, geopolitical situation in in the world let football bring people together and uh, i'm sure that this world cup will be an exceptional good world cup on the field of play but also for the image for for fifa the image of russia uh, to show that they are able to organize the world cup but russia has been in the past month past years now uh, so much under under uh, pressure, uh, but uh, but there was never an, an uh, I would say a a very concrete uh, demand that the World Cup shall not be played there. All those they don't like that the World Cup is in Russia, 
they were thinking twice or three times uh, to say, no, we should not go there, we should boycott it. No, that would not be good. That would not be good uh, because it's, it's not only the football, it's a powerhouse there. It is Russia a powerhouse. And, and here, uh, football and politics is together. It's the, the World Cup that gives now Russia uh, more power, and this powerhouse cannot be uh, just boycotted. And if they are not, uh, those they are not there, okay, they have lost something. So the 2026 World Cup will also have more teams competing. It's going to be 48 versus 32. The problem with that, in my opinion, is that with more teams come uh, much more of a boring games. I mean, it's one thing to watch France and Argentina. Everyone wants to watch it, but like, who wants to watch, I don't know, Malaysia and Saudi Arabia playing? There's going to be like much more games like that. I mean, you told me yourself in the 90s there was like one of the most boring World Cups. How do you make sure that more teams don't mean more boring football? That's wrong. What's wrong? To play with uh, 48 teams. Absolutely wrong. The, uh, the, the, the number of 32 uh, has, uh, has now acquired a, um, a, uh, a system to play in 30 days, 31 days, and uh, where definitely the best, or then by any bad chance, like, uh, like Italy and, uh, and uh, Netherlands uh, for, for this time, are, are out. But 48 teams, 48 teams will deal with the quality, that's first. And secondly, the, the other problem is they want to play in groups by three. And we have already played in groups by three in Spain, the second part of the, uh, the, the World Cup 82, when for the first time we had 24 teams. And when you have groups by three, you have always a spectator. One is not playing. So the last match in the group by three, it is open uh, for all, uh, uh, all uh, I would say, for all possible bad uh, uh, thoughts that, that are around the world when you play, when you speak about football and you speak about uh, fixed matches or whatever. But to play with your groups by three is absolutely wrong, totally wrong. You're coming to the World Cup. Uh, to see the tournaments. What do you expect to see? I mean, who are you going to root for? I mean, obviously the Swiss are going to be champions, but who do you think is going to take the silver? (laughs) 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 So, who are you rooting for? (laughs) Après c'est un tenet. No. No, I, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a guest of, uh, of uh, Mr. 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 Putin, President Putin. I am happy, or I'm, I'm honored to be invited, uh, and uh, I'll be there. But anyway, anyway, um, uh, I have uh, my opinion on, uh, on the teams uh, that would be at the, uh, the best at, at the end. Who? I have four teams. But I don't uh, put them in one to four. I put them together. Just four favorites. Who are they? The four teams are uh, Brazil. Uh, Brazil, uh, alphabetic order, Brazil. Um, Then uh, France, Germany, Spain. No Argentina? No. Okay. So let's wait and see. Thank you so much for this (laughs) wonderful interview. So much for the Swiss. <laughs> uh, we're expecting you to see you in Russia. With great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>